Have you ever wanted to visualize on a HubSpot dashboard or report exactly how prospects and customers move through your marketing and sales funnels? Then HubSpot's customer journey reports are perfect for you. Today, we're gonna to show you exactly how to build them. So our customer journey reports are a really awesome way to get that visualization about how people are moving through the processes and steps that we're trying to get them through in our marketing and sales process. But they're not really that easy to build. Usually when I talk to people about these customer journey reports, they're either really, really excited about the visualization they've been able to provide for themselves and their stakeholders, or they're like, you know, Tyler, I've jumped in here once and uh, I just couldn't figure out what was going on. So. If you've got Marketing Hub Enterprise, that is the version of HubSpot that's required to build these reports, they are, like I said, really, really powerful, but you kind of want to go into them with a plan. You want to know what process you're trying to represent, and you also want to know what are the key milestones that I want to show in the report. So it's helpful to kind of jot that down. Today, the report that we're going to build is the specific process of somebody requesting a demo via a form submission on our website. And then we want to know how well our team moves them through to becoming a customer. So we're going to take a very simple approach here. You can add more milestones or change the flow that makes sense for your business. But the process that we're going to represent is they fill out that form and then did our sales team reach out to them? Did we successfully create a deal with them? So that might be, you know, we had the demo and it went well. And did we turn them into a customer? So was that deal moved to closed one? So that's the process that we've got mapped out that we're gonna build today. So this is going to be in your report library with a new navigation here. Go to reporting and data and click on reports to see this. And we're gonna create a new report. As long as you've got that marketing enterprise version, you're gonna see this customer journey reports option here. So we're gonna click on that and you'll see two options, one for contacts, one for deals. Deals is only going to allow you to track how people are progressing through deal stages or how deals are progressing through those stages rather. Contacts is gonna give you a lot more options, all of the touch points that we know HubSpot is great at capturing. So we're gonna do a contacts based report here. So we're gonna hit next. I'm gonna jump over here to out of our test portal into a portal that's got a little bit more data. So what we're gonna see on this layout is on the left-hand side, we've got all of those items that HubSpot's tracking for us. So interactions with our marketing assets, things that our sales team is doing and tracking, even custom events that you might be uh, manually logging or logging via an app integration. And then our middle one here, our middle timeline um, column is where we can drag these steps and create the stages that we're reporting on in the report. And then the report will build over here on the right. So let's get into the process we said we were gonna build. We mentioned that was gonna start with a form submission. So we'll scroll down to forms and we'll drag that over into our first stage. So for these stages, some of the stages in the middle you can mark as optional, so contacts will show up regardless of whether or not they went through that stage, but your first stage is required. So only the contacts that went through this stage will show up in the report. Even if they've hit everything that you've got added to the report after this stage, if they didn't hit this touch point, they won't show up. So you wanna be very careful about making sure that your first stage is going to represent something that everybody in this flow goes through. So uh, in our case, that'll be the case. We wanna represent everybody that submitted this form and then find out what happened to them. Uh, so we don't want just any form submission though. We wanna filter this out. So we're gonna add a filter and we wanna filter this based on the specific form. So we're gonna use form ID and that's gonna be equal to any of, we've got a form in here called demo v2. So we'll use that and we'll go ahead and apply. So now it's just the people that have filled out that form. Uh, we'll go through here. The next stage that we wanna represent is our salespeople are supposed to email them right away after they get assigned uh, a new demo request. And so in our case, we're gonna go down to a sales email and we wanna know if they sent a sales email. So that'll be our stage two, that they sent that sales email. Then we wanna know, did they successfully create a deal for this prospect or this lead for us? So we're gonna go down here to deals so we've got this deal info, deal record created. So did we get one created here? So we'll create a new stage for that deal record being created. And the last one we wanna know is, did we successfully turn this person into a customer? So did that deal move to closed one? And that happens in our sales pipeline in this case. So we're gonna pop open sales pipeline and closed one. And we're gonna drag that over. And that will be our last stage. So now, 
we can run our report, although I've got this static date range set here and I want to go a little bit more broad than what this is. So I'm gonna actually adjust my date filter here. You can adjust to whatever makes sense for you, but I wanna look at uh, all of the uh, last 365 days, the last year. You'll also notice here, we don't need it for our flow, but we do have this checkbox to include anonymous visitors. This is great if you're including touch points like uh, website visits, things like that, that you might not know, you might not have all those people associated with contacts yet. So you can even go further out in the journey uh, before they even became a contact in your system and start to track things like how many people from this web page actually became a contact. Uh, so we can uh, we can include those anonymous visitors in these reports, although we're not gonna do that, uh, don't, not needed for this report. So we're gonna go ahead and run our report and get kind of a first glance at what this report looks like for us. All right, so we can see in the last year, we had uh, 1,122 people fill out this form. Of those 1,122 people, we sent emails to 235 of them. This is sequential, so this does mean that these emails were sent after this. If we had sent a sales email prior to them filling out this form, they would not be showing up in this flow. So it, it is, you do have to do your touch points in order for people to show up here. So 235 of those people we sent an email to. Uh, of those people, 63 of them had a deal created for them. And of those people, 12 of them became customers. So we've got a, a nice start of a report here. But let's say for us, we can either, our salespeople can either email them or sometimes they might give them a call first. So we wanna know, you know, did we email them or call them? So we're gonna go to calls here. And we wanna know, uh, did we start a call with them? And so they can do the sales email or the call and we can track that. So let's refresh our report after adding that call stage. All right, so now we've got a few more people flowing through this journey for us and we can see, okay, we're actually calling more people than we're emailing, good to know. Uh, and we've got a, a pretty fair line. Most of the people that were creating deals, we've, we've called here. Um, and then we've got 26 of those people converting to customers. So uh, starting to, to build out this report and uh, with a little bit more complexity and get a little bit more uh, answers to a few more questions here. Let's say we wanna know, you know, of everybody that filled out this form, uh, even if they didn't go through these other steps, we wanna know how many of them we turned into customers. So we're gonna take stage two here and we're gonna mark that as optional. We're also gonna mark stage three as optional, although probably could leave it required because it's hard for a deal to, to go to closed one if it was never created, but for the sake of argument here, we'll leave that as optional as well. And we will refresh it here. All right, and so now we can actually see people who um, skipped those stages. So now we've got uh, 111 people who our sales team didn't reach out to, but we did create a deal. So maybe, again, this is sequential reporting, so maybe they created a deal before they reached out to them, or maybe they didn't log in their CRM. So it's hard to say you know, exactly what the data is telling us here. Um, that's uh, up to you to interpret and dig into further, but we do start getting the, the answers to our questions here. Um, similarly, you know, we've got uh, this line here. We've got two people who went straight from call to close one, so maybe that deal already existed, right? Uh, and so we didn't create a deal after that stage, but we did move it to closed one after that stage. So that's kind of how these reports start answering questions and start surfacing um, uh, how people are progressing through here. So now we've got a nice overview of what's happening to these people that filled out their form. You know, most of them are getting a call or email. We've got a good number of people that are going straight into deal created, and we've been able to turn 36 of those people into customers over the last year. If you wanna start getting better analytics into how many people are leaving uh, or dropping off at these stages, you know, we can kind of get a sense of that, but we can also toggle this switch here and it'll actually show that on the report as well. So now we've got these lines, we can see exactly, okay, 485 people dropped off from this stage and never made it to any of our, our other stages. And we can see that for our email sends and our calls, our deals, um, and we can see that there. The report's also gonna give us some nice summary analytics here at the bottom. So we've got a total conversion. This is how many of those people that, that went through stage one, how many reached stage four. So 3.2% of the people that fill out this demo request form became customers in the last year. Our cumulative conversion is what percentage of people went through this first stage and then hit every point after, every stage after. So 2.32 people, uh, percentage of people, uh, went through the stage one, filled out that form, got either an email or call after that, 
then a deal was created, then got to close one. On average, it takes 19, 19 days for people to flow through this. And on average, it takes 2.7 days per stage as people th flow through this. Uh, we can also start to see uh, a breakout of analytics here. And I've got live data in here, so I won't click into these because it'll expose actual information. But if you click on any of these numbers here, you'll actually populate that list of contacts uh, that went through that step of the process. So that is an overview of the customer journey reports for a specific process. Again, you can represent whatever process you would like to. Uh, you do get some customization. If you're adding multiple reports to a dashboard, obviously you can name the report just like you can name any other report, but you can also customize uh, what these stages are here. So if you're seeing um, if you're seeing multiple reports in a dashboard, if you want to set it up that way, you can get a little bit more clarity at a glance for what's happening here. So, you know, stage four, instead of saying stage four, if you want that to say something like became customer and then refresh, you'll be able to see again how, um, what really the report's representing. And this again is very, very helpful if you've got multiple customer journey reports on a single dashboard. You can add these to a dashboard just like you can any other report type. After you save it, it'll give you that option to add it to a dashboard or just save it in your report library. So the possibilities with these reports really are endless. If you've got a flow that you wanna represent and as long as those activities are being tracked in HubSpot, and as we can see, we've got all kinds of types of activities that are, we can build these customer journey reports and start to get great insight and really be able to visualize how people are flowing through those steps. So really anything you can imagine for your flows, you can build out here. So that's all we've got for you today. For more HubSpot tips, tricks, and how-tos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.